Hi, I'm Slack, that's Tony, and welcome to Smog Vlog. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Reload RX200 from Wismac. <laughs> Right, so as I said, we're going to be taking a look at the Relo RX200. Now, you've probably seen pretty much everyone in their cat review this. If you haven't, then uh, it's a triple battery monster, 200 watt, temp control, canthol. It's really good. You know, it has been reviewed, but we wanted to chuck our two pennies worth in. So let's go up close for an unboxing. Right, let's unbox the Relo RX200 from Wismec. So a quick tour around the outside of the box. You've got a you know, nice diagram of it there and you've got this which can only be a picture of how the batteries fit inside the fucking thing. Um, come around the side, uh, yeah, more of the same. On the back we have a scratch and sniff authenticity. A description about the device and the choice of colours. We've gone for black but also available in white. Designed in California, made in China. There she is. First thing we're presented with is the device. We'll just take that to one side. One battery warning, one wordy thing, quick guide. A lot of pages for a quick guide. We've got a USB cable and some empty box. No tasty treats, I'm gonna go hungry tonight. So a quick tour around the device itself. You've got your go button here, it's slightly rubberized with the JBO signature on it. Uh, you've got your screen obviously here plus and minus buttons and USB connector. A little bit of venting around the side. Here's our battery case. Come down the bottom, we've just got a little bit of basic ventilation, uh, some information about the device there. Having a look at the top, you've got a nice little cup for your 510 connector to sit inside. Um, so your device is gonna sit on that rather than sort of getting all over everything. Battery door is a bit of a tight fit. Here we've got our battery ribbon and obviously room for our three batteries. Now, let's throw some batteries in this and see what it's Okay, going. so I was in two minds about getting the RX200 by uh, Wizmec because uh, a couple of months ago I got the uh, the Venti by Wizmec. Wizmec? Wizmec? Wiz yeah, Wizmec? Wizmec? Potato, Wizmec. potato. Yeah, it's all, all the same thing. Um, Keep an eye on our channel, we're going to be doing a review for this and possibly a, um, a versus video against the iJust 2, see how it compares, if you're interested in that sort of thing. But uh, at the end of the day, I thought, fuck it, you know, it's a three battery um, mod. You haven't seen one of those before, so fuck it, let's go for it. Yeah, so to clarify, this is the RX200 uh, model, uh, there is also a DNA200 model. However, those don't go down as well as these ones. These are massively cheaper, you know, we've seen them like 30 odd quid, you know, delivered to your door. That is like bargain-tastic for this mega 200 watt unit. Uh, DNA 200 one also has a few issues, you know, probably teething issues, but there's battery connection issues, battery reading error issues and stuff. So, yeah, we're not touching that one personally. I'm sure those people have already got it very happy if theirs is working, but... It's not about that, it's about this one. On the face, one of the Facebook groups that I'm a member of, I saw the, the, the RX200 referred to recently as like the Chavs mod to have because, quote, fucking everyone has got one. Um, I, I was thinking to myself, now, is that fair to the fucking mod or is, is, it, is it true? We're going to find out now as we talk about it. Quick run through of the tech specs. It's the Wismic RX200 chip. It goes from 1 watt up to 200 watts. Don't know voltage. Resistance is from 0 0.05 up to 1.5 ohm for NITI and stainless steel or 0 0.1 to 3.5 ohm for variable wattage mode. The battery range is 2.95 volts up to 4.8 volts. And the TC range is standard 100 to 300 degrees C, 200 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And obviously it takes three 18650s. For protection, it's got low voltage protection. Low resistance protection. Reverse battery protection. PCB overheating protection. 
Short circuit protection. And imbalanced battery alert. Which is pretty important for a three battery unit. Right, while Tony takes a hit, we're going to dive down and have a look at the button pushes. Right, let's touch this sucker up. Obviously you've got your go button here and your plus and minus buttons down here and your OLED screen in the middle. Pretty standard affair, talking of which, five clicks and uh, you're going to boot up uh, on and off with five clicks. You've got stealth mode by holding down go and down. And there we go, we're in stealth mode. Again, go down and stealth's off. To lock adjustments, press the up and down button, or plus and minus button, and you go lock your settings. So you should still be out of fire, however, settings are locked. If you want to lock your resistance, press the up button and the fire button. There you go, and we're resistance locked, as you can see by the little padlock in the middle, and it's the same procedure to turn it off. Done. So to change modes, three clicks of the button, and then you get to cycle through all of your different modes. So it's the standard up and down to adjust your temperature when you're in normal TC mode. Get to the top, keep holding, or press again, sorry, and uh, then you flip over into Fahrenheit and vice versa. That's pretty cool. Uh, except for it's round robin back to the bottom, but at least it doesn't just automatically roll over, which I hate. So in temp control mode, as well as the three click menu, you get a four click menu. And that's going to let you adjust your wattage that you're using while in temp control. You know, your max wattage. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at 200 because uh, that works quite well. Since a recent firmware update, you've been able to adjust your TCR, though it's, it's not quite as straightforward as would seem obvious. So the first thing you're going to want to do is know that you adjust it in the various memory modes. Three clicks to access your memory mode. You've got a choice memory one, two, or three. We'll say memory one. That's fine. Now, five clicks. Badly done. Um, that takes you into the off mode. Press the up button and the go button for a few seconds, and you will get into your TCR. Here, memory one and what TCR is. Uh, up and down, select your different ones, and uh, we're going to adjust our memory one one, for instance, and well, yeah, whatever. Uh, that's fine. When you're done, just leave it be, and uh, it will go away. And that's it. So that when you're using memory one, that's your TCR. While we're in the power off mode, you can also flip your screen round by holding down the up and down buttons. Uh, again, this is an operation you'll probably only ever press once, depending on whether you're lefty or righty. And the final thing for the power off menu is your battery status, so down and go for that. Hold that in for a while and it'll tell you the status of your three batteries. There you go, there's our voltage across the three. Right, back to the studio. Okay, cheers Slack for that uh, up close special report. Right, while we're talking about the uh, the button pushes and all that let's talk about the button quality so nice and clicky or oh. yeah beautiful click yeah proper electric button click you know yeah. so yeah it's good now i've written down minimal button rattle but i don't know why because i didn't uh it's, it's a little bit yeah it doesn't rattle when you move no. it but you know if you're pressing them they're a bit rattly but you know for day-to-day -day usage it's not going to be an issue at all which is nice in terms of operation, I mean, I haven't had any misfires of you. No, none, none. So. It's uh, solid as a rock, which it kind of needs to be being this big. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing about the, the, the buttons is, is that they're smooth and plastic, which is, it's about the tactile feel of it, you know, as, you, as you're holding the device. And it just would have been nicer if it was sort of like, I don't know, grated, sort of like metal, I don't know. It's no good looking at me. I like massive fucking arcade buttons with a huge kudunk. So, yeah, unless you get something like that, it's never perfect for me. The button looks pretty cool. It's got the j logo on it, and, yeah. you know, it, it, it works fine. It's a nice flush button, you know. If, if flush buttons are your thing, you'll love this. I suppose it helps with keeping the price down in the unit, and it is a, a very tastily priced unit, so well done. 
Yeah, the button layout for this, though it's not a DNA 200, is identical to the DNA 200 setup, so it's quite a familiar feel for those using that as well. Moving along to uh, the menu operation for, for the Rullo, it's um, fairly basic, efficient though. Yeah, fairly efficient. There's a couple of bits where, like, adjusting your TCR, you have to turn the device off. I mean, that's a new feature. They've just, by not having a dedicated menu, you know, similar to the smoke tree box, which we did the other day, uh, that, that lack of menu means that sometimes you've got to turn your device off to access some features. It's not particularly efficient, but again, it's not going to be something you're diving in and out of all the time, so we can forgive it for that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. In terms of the display, it's a 0 0.69 inch OLED screen. It, it's nice, yeah, it's fairly poppy. 69, dude. <laughs> you dirty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I will say, though, is the, the font that they've chosen to display the screen in, um, I'm not a fan of. I do not like how it looks. Uh, there are better displays out there. Uh, mm. For instance, the Snow Wolf. Snow Wolf has got really good fonts. And a nice poppy display, but the screen on this is poppy. I just don't like the font. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I, I hadn't really thought about it, so yeah, it's fine. The last thing for the uh, the device in terms of the the menu operation is um, Slack's feelings about the round robin. Actually, no, I'm going to stop you there. Fuck sakes. <laughs> this is the round robin I hate, where where you get to your top temperature and the next adjustment is it flips you to the bottom temperature. I do hate that. But this has the saving feature of it won't just scroll automatically over. You keep holding it up and it will get to the top temperature and stay there forever and a day. You need to let go and press it again. So that, that does kind of, it's this little get out of jail card for me not hating the shit out of it. So yeah, it's alright. Now let's talk about the 510 connector. Um, it's stainless steel and the, the centre pin stainless steel as well. Fairly uneventful, fairly standard. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Has a nice little cup to support your uh, yeah, atomizer. Which someone's going to go and talk about the Green Lantern. That's right. And let's hope that he takes the bait. Around the cup is a sort of fairly similar looking logo to the Green Lantern thing. But... I've not seen Green Lantern, so Tony's going to fill us in on the details. For sakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so around the 510 connector, he's got sort of like the dish that, that Slack's talking about. Cup. Dish. And um, around that is sort of like some, I don't know, weird shit, sort of like reminiscent of the, uh, the Green Lantern logo from the film, which is a pile of shit, so let's not talk about that anymore, because that's where the similarities between these two ends yeah this is good this is good and i had no interest in watching green lantern so there we go <laughs> watch deadpool instead so a fairly common problem for most mods is where you're taking atomizers on and off there's a lot of sort of scratching tends to go on there as you put you know drippers especially on there this hasn't had any and we've been swapping the shit out of this for testing uh i don't doubt that in time it will eventually gash up but so far so good so yeah that's pretty cool Next up on the hit list for you guys is the features for the Relo RX200. It's uh, got wattage and temperature control. Yeah, temp control is pretty cool on this device. Uh, it does the big three. You know, you got your nickel, your titanium, and uh, thanks to a recent firmware update, stainless steel. Also, thanks to that firmware update, you can now adjust your TCR, which we showed you in the button presses, which is really cool. I love having that, uh, even if you don't need to use it. Out of the box settings for this on temp control, I thought were pretty good. Other features for the device include um, resistance lock, stealth mode, adjustment button lock, which is holding the plus and minus together. It's fairly standard fare. It's got a 10 second cut off, same, same as a lot of other devices, which is, you know, like Slack said in the previous video, just sort of like a bag lock really for when you're carrying it about and it's firing automatically. Uh, the other big thing for it, which is, is great for a device of this caliber, is um, the upgradable firmware, which is... There's one other uh -huh. thing that you're missing. There's one other. Yeah, what else can you do with that USB port, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> someone's a happy bunny <laughs> although I must add here that even um, Wismec themselves state that although it has that functionality 
maybe just use the battery charge. Now we're going to talk about temperature control. Well, to be more accurate, Slack's going to talk about temperature control after I've got the through the bit that I want to talk about. While temperature control works flawlessly for, for what I've used it for, he's done a lot more in-depth sort of work on it than, than I have. Um, what I wanted to use this section for was talking about the update that I did through the firmware on the device, the upgradable firmware, and the nightmare that I had trying to achieve that. Um, so you've got to take all your batteries out of the device and connect it up to a PC, which is sta standard fare. But the version that I had on this was the original version, version 1, 1.03, something like that. And it had to update to 1.08. Well, with the download package that they gave you, they had 1.07 in there as well. And I thought, you know what, let's be logical and update to 1.07, then go on to 1.08. I mean, it's nerve wracking enough if you get a power outage while you're doing a firmware upgrade you've effectively fucking bricked your device which means it's a fucking brick and it's no good good to you anymore now i did the update to 1.07 and the fucking thing did not turn on took the batteries out put the batteries back in five clicks fucking nothing not shitting myself too much because i thought you know what at this stage i can't break it any fucking further um i just clicked and connected it back up to the PC and clicked the update again to 1.08 and luckily it wasn't a brick anymore it was all working and I was really happy and not shitting myself anymore the upshot of this is what I'm saying is, is that Wismec need to pull their fucking finger out and um, put some information out there because you have got no information at all about how to go through this process that's enough for this section. Well, that's enough for me rattling on in this section. Let's go over to Slack now for um, information on temperature control. Okay, yeah, so following on from that, yeah, it does what it says on the tin. Now, it's not, I found it, it's really good. It's like a fairly warm uh, vape. Now, what I mean by that is when you're setting 250 degrees C, it does sort of feel like 250. Uh, there's like a sort of common sort of setting that I like to go for uh, and some you know they, they never beat it they only ever sort of like hey that's not enough and you have to turn it up that bit more this you know it didn't really suffer with that though it does wander a little bit I found myself adjusting it 20 degrees C here or there but it wasn't bad you know it's absolutely fine and also you can adjust your TCR on your device so that that's really cool so uh, and yeah, really happy with it. Okay, on to portability, size and weight of the device. So first thing I'm going to say, regardless of size or anything, is it fits in your hand pretty well. It's comfortable to hold with the, the weird sort of hand grip shape there. Um, yeah, it, it works well. It works well. But obviously being a three battery unit, it's a bit of a concern for size and weight. How did you get on with it, Tone? Okay, so like I wrote down in the review notes for this device, um, it feels, yeah, good in the hand. <laughs> Always feels good. In the, the the device feels <laughs> that good. <too>. In the, <laughs> the the important thing that I found for it though was that they kept the height of it down, so it wasn't as tall. Because I thought if it was going to be sort of like a tall mod, it it was going to be too much in the hand. But the ergonomics of it, how how they've designed it with this sort of how do they what do they say? It's an octagon sort of shape. It it's just so natural and ergonomic. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um... It really is. Now, being a three battery one, obviously weight is going to be a concern. However, we've just whacked it on the scales. A fully loaded three battery RX200 actually weighs exactly the same to the gram as a Snowwolf 200 watt with two batteries in it. Um, yeah, well, I was quite surprised about that. You know, I was expecting this to weigh in a little bit more, but where it's shorter and uh, it's yeah, thinner materials and stuff. Yeah, it's still tough material, but thinner compared to the Snow Wolf. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty good. Right, next up, let's talk about the battery life of this device. Tone, what's your thoughts? Well, have we mentioned that it's 318650s? <laughs> Might have done. <laughs> Just once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, this is like the main selling point for it. Um, in, in my testing of it, I, I sort of found that although you're only getting one battery extra compared to a box mod, it feels like you're getting more than half of that battery life again, you know? It just feels like it fucking runs and runs and runs for, for ages, a lot more than, than three batteries should actually last for, which is fucking great. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, so I, I charged this last night, and I've been using it non-stop since, 
and we're down to you know maybe three quarters which which is brilliant because i've been using the shit out of this uh yeah it's really nice especially after coming off a single uh battery unit which like, i'll get like an hour or two the other thing for battery life is how easy it is to change change the three eighteen six fifty batteries. You just hop the back of the battery door off and bosh, you're straight in there. Yeah. Um, the other thing it's got going for it is is the USB charging, which is great. But even Wismec themselves say on the website, although it's got it built in and it will work, they still even recommend that you take it out and use a dedicated battery charger, which is just standard battery safety. Yep, quite right. Condition your batteries equally. Uh, also, best practice to swap the positions around. Don't keep them in one, two, and three. You should label up your batteries uh, and just remember to swap them about so they're not all in the same position each time. But yeah, I mean, USB charging, if you're in a push, you know, uh, we've all been there, you know, driving yeah. along in your car, quickly plug it in yeah. the fucking cigarette lighter and emergency, away you go. Emergency top up. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's good to be able to have that choice, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's good to keep someone happy. Right, on to a very important topic, the battery cover. So, Tony, you better take <laughs> this first. Yeah, it's been great as far as I've been concerned. Um, it, it was actually me watching another video on YouTube, uh, Grim Green, uh, who informed me that the, there was actually up and down. Rattle. Yep. 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 Just in case that's off camera, that's slack rattling the back of the door and not messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I had to watch someone else's video to effectively tell me that the, there was battery rattle on it. But, you know, in, in general operation of the device, I hadn't even fucking noticed it. So... But Slack's going to now chime in, and we should all pay attention. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Now, Tony didn't notice the battery rattle, but again, I was changing a dripper on there. It was a bit stiff, and that is where I had the clunk, you know? Like, what the fuck just happened? Did I pull a button up? Oh, no, it's the battery door. Yeah, it, you don't notice it during normal operation of the device, yeah? But if you're holding something, tugging away, uh, then... Uh, <laughs> Then it doesn't matter about vaping, you know, if you're having a good time. That's no. right, that's right. But yeah, it, it doesn't annoy me, yeah, because it's only sort of, it, it stays on, and that's the important thing. And for, during normal operation, it doesn't rattle, so that, that's pretty cool. I'm happy. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> the other thing that uh, is actually a bit of a bugbear for me is, is the fact that... Um, there's a slight gap on the battery door at the top vertical section. Yeah, you can just see a little bit of yellow battery poking out there. You won't be able to see it on camera. But, yeah, I spotted that as yeah. well. It's an unfortunate colour choice for battery, but, you know, it can be taken care of with battery wraps if it, if it does affect you that much. Well, I'm going to pretend that that's additional venting to stop it exploding in your face if something goes wrong. It's probably not. It is probably just a bit of a shoddy match-up. But let's just go with that and then everyone's happy, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Good. In terms of style for the device, I mean, it is totally fucking unique. There's nothing else on the market like it. Like I said earlier, it's an octagon shape. Fits well in the hand. Uh, the materials that they've used for the construction of it, really sturdy. Like we said earlier in the review, no fucking uh, scraping on the top 510 thread at all yet, which is quite weird because it should have happened with some of the fucking stuff that I've been putting on there. But yeah, no, it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, it's definitely got a style, you know. You can see someone else using it, you know straight away what it is. It's got the cool j signature on it as well, which I quite like, you know, it looks cool. Um, yeah, it is quite nice. I mean, it's fairly plain black, funky shape, and yeah, it's good. Okay, the warranty on this device is going to be 90 days according to the website and that's just going to cover your standard manufacturing defects. You break it, you bought it, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Right, as we're getting towards the end and towards summing up of the device, let's just run through the pros and cons. As always, we start with the cons so we can leave on a bit of a high. First con is going to be the weight. You know, the weight isn't bad considering it's a three battery unit but it's still a three battery unit and weighs a lot. So, you know, it's something you need to consider. The uh, the next con will be the lack of colour options when you've got the standard black or the white. They, they call it white, but it's got that shite turquoise with it. I saw that on the website and I instantly hated it. Um, there's a joke to be had here about black, dark grey, silver, and then blue. But... That's another video if you want to check and find out which one it is. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know you found it. Next con, 
So the next con is going to be the firmware upgrading and the lack of information around that. Tony's obviously run you through the problems he had with that. Uh, if we get to do a firmware upgrade again, either before this goes out or maybe as an amendment, we might show you how to do it just so it's there and you can just follow someone's guide rather than the apparent lack of information that's out there. Um, but yeah, it works. That's something. And at least you can do firmware upgrading. The font choice on the display for me is is a negative as well. It's not 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 that it's not the display isn't poppy enough. It's just the fact that I don't like the way the font looks. <laughs> this personal choice doesn't yeah. impact the operation of the device at all. Yeah, and it it doesn't affect me at all. I personally wouldn't place it in cons. I certainly wouldn't place it in pros either. But you know, it's horses for courses. And I wrote this review. The other con is um, the the button quality. Not necessarily the quality, but the the construction material. As I said earlier in the review, I just would have preferred it maybe made out of metal, maybe with a tactile feel to it, with grating on it. Some maybe something funky done with with the um, the Jabo that's written written on there. Just something different. But you know, like I said earlier, probably just to keep costs down. They've they've kept it cheap and plastic. Yeah, not, not a big con for me. It's all right. Um, and again, like the last thing, it's just not a pro either. And the last bit from me, really, is the sort of menu operation. While you can sort of get to everything, there's a lack of dedicated menu there, so you've got to faff about and turn stuff on. It does have the shitty round robin I hate, but it has that saving feature, at least, of where it won't just roll over from top to bottom temperature you know, instantly. So... It sort of saves itself. There. Okay, that's enough ragging on it. Let's uh, talk about some of the shit that it's got going for it. First up, first and foremost, it's got to be the price because this is a very keenly priced and marketed product. I won't tell you how much I paid for it because we don't do that anymore. God damn you, TDP. TPD. TPD. One of those bastards. Yeah. So next up on the cons list is going to be style and individuality. You're not going to see anything else look like this at the moment, you know, which is really cool. Um, yeah, there's so many sort of just generic square box mods that all look the same. This has sort of stepped away from that just to fit the three batteries in and stop it being a big box. But, you know, it works. It's really cool. Next up is the feel of the device. Now... I don't want to say anything about punching people in the face, but god damn it, it just feels like it would work so well. Yeah, while we're on that, I work with the South African. He's like, why don't they make these with tasers in the back? And this would be perfect for it because you've got this like you know, solid punch and a taser. Just if someone's trying to jack you for your vape juice or something, you know. <laughs> Brilliant idea. Yeah, Needs absolutely. To yeah. yeah. The other positive thing going for it is the amount of battery venting for it. Although it's got vents down the side, it's also got a shitload in the bottom, which is nice, nice touch. It just means for the amount of batteries you've got in there, remember you've got one extra, so if uh, if they do decide to go, that uh, you're fairly in safe hands, that it's not going to blow your fucking face off. Yeah, so next up in our pros, uh, you got to have the fact that it's got all three TCs, you know, once your firmware updated, and additionally you can adjust your TCR, which is a definite win. <laughs> Though that said, temp control works pretty good out of the box. So, in summing up for the Wismic RX200, you know, we like it, that's cool, but it does have this stigma attached to it, apparently, where, you know, it's a bit of a chavs mod, but... Is that worth? Is that justified? Uh, I don't think so. You know, there's three factors here. You know, it's got outperform the competition. It's got an extra 18650 18, battery in there. It's got real individual styling, and combine that with the fact that it's actually one of the cheapest, you know, big mods out there, 200 watt mods out there. You know, that that is pretty awesome. So that trifecta of awesomeness has landed Wiz Wizmec. I don't know how we're pronouncing that, in the hot seat, because everyone fucking wants one. Yeah, and quite right so. It is an awesome, awesome unit. Okay, guys, that about sums it up for our review of the Wismec, Wismec, Rullo RX200. If you enjoyed this balls up of a video, please <laughs> drop us a like, subscribe, for God's sakes, we need it. Um, leave us a comment down below if you've got any questions about the Relo or if you think we've missed anything yeah hopefully we haven't but um, don't forget to follow us on the social medias Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and if you've got any comments or questions just hook us up on that 
Anyway, thanks for watching Smog Vlog. Ready? No! Yeah, no, no. <laughs> mm, chicken. <laughs> are you starting? Are you swallowing a laugh? Fell end. <laughs> it's usually my job. It's <laughs> <sighs> nice. Swallowing. <laughs> I've got something for you to swallow. <laughs> Why? How did you get on with it, Tone? Well, like I said in my room. No. <laughs> this is your review? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> That's how she likes it. <laughs> Let us know you found it. Next con. <laughs> this try vector. vector. Right, let's push some buttons. Thanks, Phantom. <laughs> let's huff on the microphone. That will go really well. That will go really well. Right, let's touch this sucker up. Obviously you've got your go button and your plus and minus buttons there and your lovely OLED screen there. Standard operation, five clicks and you're on. Fuck, only when you do them properly. Right, let's touch this sucker up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, to change modes, it's three clicks the button. Uh, properly. Right, since a recent firmware up... Yeah, let's do that in English. So good. Oh, my head's all wonky again. Oh, oh, oh same thing. I know, that's why I'm going to have to fucking not look at it. <laughs>